You are now entering Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast hosted by a Spanish soccer mom, a 30-year-old silver-haired fox going on 60, and finally, a 200-pound bowl nice. of spaghetti with chimichanga one up. I'll turn my phone on you. I'm playing Nintendo. And we're back to Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast that has, instead of Corey Hosford, a new third member on the show. Because Corey's gone forever. And yeah. now we have our very new and uh, very, uh, no, not, how do you say, like, very little expertise, Sam? Very little expertise? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corey actually sent me a text and he said, uh, let's see what it was. He said... Um, I'm not coming on the show for the third time in a row because I hate the fans and uh, my sponsors and the sport. So um, I guess you're entitled to that opinion, Corey, but I don't think it's a, the right thing to say. But, you know, it's, he's his own boy. He's allowed to say that, I guess. He's his own man. Yeah, he's his own baby boy. Uh, but we, I'm happy to have JTPP here in his space. Uh, you know, he's he's like a, like a better-looking better driving, way cooler, cooler uh, version of Corey Hosford. Would you say so? I totally agree. I think uh, it's, uh, it's quite an update, uh, an upgrade. But JTP is not talking. He's just laughing and drinking. It looks like a lean in kugels. Yeah. I'm trying. This is the same as your shirt, right? Yeah. Lean in kugels, uh, Lufka <laughs> cold, same thing. It's the same, same. Same, as, same as my drink right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm liquid yeah. cooled. You're air cooled. I ah. like that a lot. That's, you're very smart. We should we should keep this guy, Paco. He knows what he's saying. I think this is gonna be a permanent um, a permanent change to the show from now on. Yeah, yeah. You've got you've got three hours every week to blow, right? Yeah. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> cool. Corey, right now is probably like, oh, thank God, I can just like not go to the show anymore. Uh, I'm already getting F's in chat. For uh, poor Kevin, um, <laughs> I guess I guess we could just go right into grid life then. So we got tons to talk about with Justin. Um, he got the first uh, hundred point qualifying run that has been gotten in like what like seven years. Uh, Tanner Faust was the last one, and that was in Wall. It's very exciting. We haven't talked to him in like a year. We could also go back and talk about the street racing that we used to do in Phoenix because that's pretty cool, right? Street fellow street <laughs> racers, and yep. uh, but there's definitely uh, lots to talk about the season. But first. We haven't even spoken since Grid Life. Right after Grid Life last week, uh, the first Grid Life uh, Alpine Horizon in Colorado, I immediately had to go take care of my mom. She got hip surgery, and I was taking care of her and didn't have a chance to record or talk about the show or anything like that. But here we are. We're back, and uh, let's let's hit Grid Life. Justin was there, part of the reason why I wanted you on the show today. Killing what it. Did you, what did you think of uh, Grid Life Alpine Horizon? You've been to a lot before, but this was the first of this kind. I mean, for our first event, it was insane i it's everything that i could ever hope grid life could be and will be and the potential for the future at that venue and hopefully more venues that have that same feel is if that's the direction that is going it's going to be insane yeah and um, to describe what it was that's different in that you know grid life already is an insane awesome party event where there's drifting there's grip there's music and a lot of shenanigans before in between and after and uh, and this time, because there was no noise restriction at the track, we could drift as late as we wanted. So we were drifting all the way till midnight while there was music going on. And they had a bunch of lights out there that were actually Falcon, Teal, and Blue. So that was pretty cool. And you could see that. a lot of the footage on my gram, uh, on Grid Life, and pretty much everywhere. I'm sure you guys have probably seen some stuff. But the, the idea of like drifting at night while there's a live band playing, going around, wrapping around the stage uh, with a cool light show was just really awesome. So... That was cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. The venue, I think the venue was perfect. Yeah. Um, the off-grid stuff was super cool. I think uh, integrating that into what they're already doing has like a ton of potential. Uh, but yeah, like being able to actually just because the venue was like tighter and not mm -hmm. as spread out as like um, Atlanta or Gingerman, um, it was, the action was like right in everybody's face. Like the music yeah. was going on. It was just, man. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Perfect. How many how many claws do you think you had? I don't know. <laughs> that is a, that is I, the correct answer. 
So I did talk to the White Claw rep. I let him know how much we've been repping him for free, and I let him know that uh, it's time for them to start giving back. He <laughs> laughed. He gave and you a six pack, and he was like, "There you go." No, we actually did. So we funny story. We actually did do a claw deal, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Forrest Wang gets rid of that uh, palm tree on his car next for next year, and he's got a big White Claw on his car <laughs> because uh, the White Claw dude was like, "Hey, if I uh, if I give you guys a couple of cases of White Claw, can you give me a drift car?" And we're like. Hell yeah! So we, we can. Uh, we found found Forrest was open for that run. We uh, we did the deal, and then uh, Greggy Buccelli and me we uh, we got a couple claws. Forrest got a claw. Everyone was happy. We got clawed out. Yep. Um, did you Paco? Did you get the gigantic claw? We we got we got a big cardboard one, and we we brought it back with Corey's yeah, car. Yeah, it, it is. Studio? It is not at the studio yet because uh, Corey has been. Uh, pretty busy, and I haven't been able to go to his shop to pick it up. But we literally got a gigantic mango claw. Yeah, uh, so are those leftover claws from from uh, Grid Life, actually, Paco? Excuse me. Are those leftover claws from from Grid Life that you're drinking right now? Yeah, you I brought him, all the claws I brought them on the plane. Life. You're right. Yeah, I got no. I mean, I, I I probably brought like I checked in like 28. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean. And then the other, of course, big thing of grid life that occurred was um, my sweet baby boy drone, uh, Big K, uh, oh. Kevin. Um, he did die on his first day out. <laughs> so I've been, just I don't know if you follow, and for those that are listening to this, is your first episode. Hi, I'm Sam, by the way. Um, <laughs> I've been learning FPV droning for about five, six months now, and I started with a bunch of like little, more or less toy drones that fit in the palm of your hand and learning with those. And then I moved up to, uh, you know, you keep on going bigger and bigger. And I had my first true race drone. I don't know if you've watched like Johnny FPV or Mr. Steel or any of the other dudes. Uh, Laserhawk was a guy at Grid Life. Um, you know, these are fast race drones that can go 80 miles an hour and chase drift cars. So this is my first time. I've been training for this. I was ready. I got my first race drone out there. I did some, uh, some runs in the morning with the Sierra ARX cars, which were really cool. And that thing ripped. It was flying. It was cruising. Um, come nighttime on Friday, the drift cars are out. Uh, Kevin is soaring. We're getting close to the cars. We're having good times. I made an Instagram TV video of uh, of the onboard camera, which is very low res, but it gets the point across. You know, I wasn't I wasn't any pro FPV pilot, but I was having some fun and getting some cool cinematic shots. Uh, much room for improvement still. But then, while well, deep in a chase with some drifty cars, um, you know, you're relying on FPV, you're relying on vision, you're wearing goggles. The drone is pretty much out of sight and turned every other direction. <laughs> Um, and my video cut out suddenly out of nowhere. And when that happens, um, you kind of hope it comes back immediately. You get temporary cutouts sometimes, but this just cut out, went to black. And in the span of about two seconds, I had to make a decision to either, um, you know, take off the goggles, try to maybe find it and guide it abort, home. Abort, abort. Or, or, or you can uh, maybe fly up in the air and maybe fly away somehow, um, if you remember your exact position. Or in this case, I did the safe option because I'm still very much in, I don't want to say an amateur pilot, but I'm, I'm not a pro pilot yet, for sure. And uh, I made the choice that I just had to hit the kill switch and abort Kevin's beautiful run. And uh, I was just hoping that maybe he landed in the grass and, of course, very much hoping he didn't <laughs> land fly into the crowd. And you have to hit the kill switch because it could be dangerous for, for people and there were people around. So the only logical choice was to um, hit the kill switch. And I did the right thing. However, he did land in the middle of the track. Um, <laughs> and... And they threw up the yellow flag, and uh, you know everyone was aware. Adam, Adam, and Swan were aware, and they had the yellow flag out. Um, the, the drivers, and there's a ton of drivers. The cars are just hot lapping. It's insane. And, Who ran uh, it over? Uh, Odie was the one that finally hit it. Your, a bunch of drivers saw it. And your teammate. It. Odie, Odie, just ran it over. And then he thought that it point, was a clipping point. And yeah, and like, then I'm at, gonna get that. And then at that point, the track officials were like, "Well, that's done. Uh, green flag. Let's do it." And then he continued to get ran over by. 40 other cars for the rest of the session. Like it was in, it was in so many pieces. I've got it sitting up there. The, like the main frame, this carbon is actually pretty much intact, but all of its guts are were screwed everywhere. The GoPro was in a thousand pieces, and uh, the memory card from the GoPro was not in the part of the GoPro that I did find that carries the memory card. So after the track went cold due to a crazy ass storm warning, a lightning storm that was nearby, I went out and looked for it, and somehow in all of the tire debris and everything, I see. Half of a micro SD card, which is you know smaller than your pinky fingernail, I see that sticking out of a pile of rubber. I'm like, fuck yes! I found all my footage from the day. I was being very uh, nonchalant with footage dumping because it wasn't a, an official shoot. If it's an official shoot, I'm going to dump after every flight. 
But um, this one, I was like, eh, I'm not shooting professionally. I'm just having fun. I'll dump at the end of the day. I said all my footage, and I find this card sitting in the debris, and it was half of an SD card. So everyone ran it over so much that they got a micro SD card destroyed. Um, so that was the death of Kevin. And, and yep. But beautifully, he got <laughs> one more flight. The next day, um, I zip I zip tied him to Odie's front bumper, and Odie did the first session with uh, Kevin zip tied to with his front Kevin, bumper with so Kevin's got, carcass attached. To yeah, it, it so was Kevin pretty was metal. You. He was chasing you down during that that uh, morning session on Saturday, Justin. I hope that I hope that you you did him some respect. You did. You did some good I drinking. Did, so I did my best. I so did my Kevin. Best to... Kevin must have been very excited about that, so I want to thank you. And I want to so, thank... Uh, what's your new race drone's name? Kevin. All my drones <laughs> are named Kevin. They're all Kevin. I've got, uh, I've got Baby Kevin, Big Baby Kevin, Ultra Baby Kevin, Safety Kevin. Uh, the race drone was Big K. And uh, as of right now, Big K 2.0 is nearly built. Um, my good buddy Crop Dustin, Corey's bestie. Uh, you know Dustin, of course. Yeah. JTP. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, he's been getting... He's kind of been my mentor in the world. He is uh, he's almost wrapped up making Big K 2.0, who will be better in every way. And I really hope his video feed doesn't cut out. Um, there's, I think I've figured out the problem was a bum battery, or the problem is, is that I bought a ready-to-fly, not ready-to-fly, but it was a custom-built drone from someone else. And I don't know if uh, that someone else did a bad job or my battery died. I think it was a bad battery that just lost power immediately. But now that I know that Dirty D's making it, uh, Dusty Poo, he's going he's gonna to make me a good one, and hopefully it'll be at least one day before um, I land it in the middle of a track get, and it gets get run over. Day out of it. <laughs> 40 times, yeah. So we'll see. But I'm very excited about that. But that's the story. Yeah, we of... are too. We're excited. Thank you. For you. Thank you very much. And yeah, if you guys want to throw some Fs in uh, chat, pay some respects, hit F, slam that F key in chat. I'd appreciate it. And uh, just F in life. If you're listening to this after the fact, just silently whisper, F. <sighs> just make that noise, and Kevin <laughs> will hear you in heaven. And, and we'll appreciate that. Uh, then, then before we get off the grid life topic, let's let's talk about real quick that uh, South is coming up. Justin, you're going to be at South. Unfortunately, not. I no! What? All right. Uh, grid life. Grid life. South's canceled. Uh, yeah. Sam, cancel your tickets. <laughs> you, this is the first one you're missing in a while, isn't it? Yeah. That's unfortunately. Problem. Why is that? Um, I just got some other other stuff that I'm doing. Other grid wow, life. Wow. Can't even events. tell us. Mr. BC. That's fine. That's fine. Is uh, Odie Butcheeks going to be there? I don't think Falcon's going to be there. I think oh. Falcon has. Oh, so uh, Falcon's not coming. Uh, Academy um, that weekend or that uh, week. Yeah, it's tough to get, you know, the regular cast there every single time. Leo Vaughn wasn't at this last one. There's, there's, you know, everyone has big obligations. So I get it. But that is uh, going to be Friday, August 23rd, Saturday, uh, August 24th, and Sunday, uh, August 25th at... Road Atlanta, drifting the uh, drifting the FD ish layout, but also the full track, which is cool. So the cars keep hot lapping around the track and hit the S's in the back. And it's a very very good time, and uh, you guys should go if you're anywhere near there, or you're not even near there. Fly there; it's the best. We're gonna be out there, Corey, Paco, and myself, and not Justin because he doesn't care about us. He doesn't like us. But Justin, <sighs> come on, guys. Sorry, you can, Justin. You're just gonna have to hold it down. So I was all prepared, and I think I did this last show, too. I was all prepared to be like, Justin, you, you know, what is it now that you're doing really well? Like, you weren't doing well before. But then 2018, you got fifth place. So it was the year before that that you weren't doing as well. <laughs> You've been doing really well for a long time now. But um, the, let's, let's just go straight to the 100-point run, the 100-point qualifying run, the, the thing that has not occurred since the, the golden boy, T. Fau Fau, laid that down in, like, the early days of drifting, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, that was... Um... Definitely one of, if not the, my biggest accomplishment, I think, that I've had in, in drifting. Um, you know, doing really well in a championship uh, is obviously, like, extremely important, and we all try really hard to do that. But uh, you have lots of things that play into um, being successful in an event or for the season or, you know, there's so many things that can happen. Um, in qualifying, though, it's like you against the track. And... Being able to throw down a 100-point run is, I don't know, I mean, it's definitely a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny, though, because I can go back and look at it, and I can pick out, like, a bunch <laughs> right. of stuff that I, I did wrong. But 
Um, I was actually talking to um, a couple of the judges today, and it was one of those things where I think that at that point, the transitions and my initiation and like the flick to angle that I had throughout the course was a lot more aggressive than what some of the other drivers were doing the entire day. So I think all of that in a live scenario, it was everything that they were looking for, um, like proximity to clipping points, yeah, like zones, like all of that stuff. And I think the initial impact of the run was that, that they rewarded me with a hundred point run. So, yeah. um, you Which, know, I mean, we haven't talked to the judges, uh, since the run, but it's like, I, I get, you know, just like you said that, the, you know, you could say that you're two inches off this clip or that was this minor thing. And so it should be a 99 point run, but I don't agree. You know, what is perfection in this sport? You know, is it, is it an inch away from every clip? Is it ultra snappy transitions? Of course, I imagine it's filling every zone for the amount of time you need to like where, but you have to be specific. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say you have to be specific. You shouldn't be totally specific on where that line is drawn. And I think that I could definitely see how it's a hundred and I haven't seen a lot of um, fallout from other people saying that like, oh, fuck this, that's not 100, the judges are fake any more than usual. But <laughs> I think I can see why it's 100 and I'm happy it was awarded and I think that you definitely deserved it because you've been really crazy with the qualifying lines and competition lines, of course, but like it's uh, and I think, it was quite the energetic run. Yeah, and I think the, the fans actually responded very positively to that 100 because mostly on the chat... You can tell from the on the people on the on the crowd at the at the stadium, like everybody seemed to love that run, and I mean we were watching, and <clears throat> I said like, dude, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a hundred, and like I was surprised that it was a hundred mostly because you know you think it, nah. it never happened. Yeah, it never happened. Yeah. But and then so I'm like, whoa, you know what? Yeah. Like hats off, man. That was that was pretty sick. Yeah, and it was it was. <laughs> Definitely, like you watch. I was just watching it again. You can check it out if you guys haven't seen it yet on uh, Justin's Instagram, Justin Pawlak, Paw, P A W L A K, thirteen, and it's a couple, uh, the page or two down there. But um, you'll see the wall speedway, and you can watch the run. And it's like the only thing that looks like it stands out a little bit negatively is that outer clip uh, on the bottom bowl, like near the start line, where you're like a foot away. Ugh. And I can see how <laughs> someone would say like, "Oh, that's that's not enough for a hundred, but. Uh, whatever about that but you can see like your your throttle control the snappiness of the transitions your front wheels are just dialed like the second you get into drift for each uh each line like your your tires don't wiggle like you're just locked laser locked into the line which is really cool to see is that but, yeah it's where you're like pretty much like steering with a with a with your gas pedal is that kind of like how you're like controlling the car yeah i mean the transition like in front of the the um stands there like i i kind of like hung the front bumper over the first line so i was maybe like a foot off that clip or around a foot off that clip so i could definitely see you know some uh some potential there for not full points but i was within the one stripe so i guess that's where they avoided or uh, awarded me full points there and then going into the outer zone too i don't i mean like I had been like pulling that off like occasionally throughout practice, but not consistently. And I just threw it to like full lock and it was like so quick that I actually like yanked the steering wheel, like I just initially like yanked the steering wheel back. But then I was like, no, I can't like, like in my head, like I can't, I got to keep it at an angle. So I maybe pulled like an eighth of a turn out of it. Um, but I just happened to land in that groove of the bank and the flat, like right on the line. And I just stayed on throttle and it just stuck. And <laughs> um, it was a pretty awesome feeling. And then I think at that point, the rest of the track was like pretty dialed. I was like super close to the uh, inner clips, like almost grazing them. Uh, and then same with like the, the outer touch and go. And then the final in, uh, inner clip. But I, I remember like, coming through that first inner clip and flicking it. And, and when I stuck that, I was like, man, like that felt pretty good. But then also in the back of my head, I was like, shoot, like, I know that, like, I felt like it was a, maybe a big correction. Um, but you can't really see that in the video. You can, if you like scrutinize it a lot, but I think it like a live type of deal, it was such a fast transition mm -hmm. to like such angle that it was, 
it was like, wow, how did he pull that off? Like, because mm -hmm. I was kind of like, wow, how did I pull that off? What uh, what you have for breakfast in the morning? <laughs> was everything dialed on your car? What you condition to, was the track? Had, like, lucky I underwear. Off, I got like some new Sparco gloves and some new Sparco shoes. There you go. So I'm totally saying that that's that's yeah. why I did that. So yeah, thanks. The news, the, you, you can't bash the glove in the shoe game. Like you, uh, it does. It is a mental thing. I remember when I got my first pair of uh, drifty gloves. They're actually Sparcos. Like I felt like I drove ten times better just having the gloves on. Just really dialed it in. That's right. What uh, were was your car in perfect running order? Was the track temp perfect? Was everything perfect, or was it just you know everything was as good as it could be? You know, I think it, uh, my guys, uh, my team has just really helped dial in the car, and they're just every round they're getting better and better at looking at the car, seeing what it's doing outside of the car. I'm getting better at communicating with them of what I need with the car, and I think it's just a huge collaboration of. Jason, my spotter, Tim, Stan, and Dalton, they're all like just gelling really well on giving me the car that I need. Jason's giving me the feedback that I need, and it's just giving me a lot of confidence behind the wheel. And I think that's the biggest change that we've had from when I started driving this car to say two years ago when I wasn't doing too well. And then last year we started to see it a lot more, and we had the successes that we had last year. And this year, I mean, we had a bit, a bit of a slip up in uh, Atlanta where we got knocked out in 32, but for the most part, we've been pretty solid on top eight finishes. Um, and yeah. we've lost to like, we've lost the winner like three or four rounds and <laughs> lost to James. He got second place last round. So it's one of those things where we're losing to guys that are like killing it. So you, you can't be mad. Um, yeah. We obviously want to get on the podium. The competition is nuts now, man. There's it's so many good sense. drivers. Yeah, I've seen the Ward House boys in the final battles at uh, <laughs> Seattle. I remember saying, saying the same thing, I think, when they're doing the... I think they're both in the finals last year as well. I don't remember. But whenever I see those two in the finals, like, I just think, like, oh, how is anyone ever going to beat them? <laughs> it does happen, of course. Hopefully not usually those guys just beating themselves or the cars beating them, their own cars beating them, that is. But it's like... I see that level of driving that they've brought into the sport, and it's definitely made you better. It's made everyone better because they've had to. They had to overcome, and they're still, of course, uh, top notch and screwing everyone up. Does I really believe that when they came in three years ago, it was a huge t turning point in our series. I think the judges started looking at style more. Mm. I think that the all the drivers were like, oh, shit, like that's how we should be driving. <laughs> yeah. And because um, those dudes were driving with style, they weren't trying to run away from anybody. They were putting it on people's doors and just their whole mentality. Like Peter and James, like their whole like happy go lucky. We're here to drift like just that positive outlook on the sport is yeah. I think is just really like flown float over to, to a lot of the other drivers and honestly it's super fun hanging out with those dudes at the track because they're always super positive just yeah. always pumped to be doing what they love no nice. except for i can't get that damn uh peter kid on the show i tried to get him after seattle and it's very challenging <laughs> i don't think he really wants to um and also is he's really hard to get a hold of <laughs> I, mean, I haven't gotten on to it i haven't got him yet but i'll get do him you, one of these days do you um justin when you did your run like when you were sitting the, actually, I'm, I'm not sure. When you guys do your your qualifying runs, you, you don't sit around at the finish line waiting for your score, right? You just finish and just go back to your pits. Yeah. Um, were, were you, like, extremely confident, like, wow, I killed it. Like, I know that was an amazing run. I'm going to get a perfect 100 or at least a 98, 99. Like, what was I mean, on your I, head? I felt that it was, like, pretty solid. Uh, in my mind, I was already picking apart the mistakes that I made that okay. I thought, like, um, so I was like, all right, probably like a 95. And the other thing, too, is at that point, I think I was like 13th. Um, so when you're lower in the rankings, I feel like it's sometimes the judges want to save a little bit. Um, they, they are maybe more reluctant to give out like a huge score early on because they don't want to set the bar too high potentially because right. they want room to like have better runs so i was like thinking like man like if i get like a mid 90s it's pretty solid you know uh but again like i didn't you know you can't see it from the outside so you don't really know what 
the run looked like. I just knew what I felt. And I felt like I had pretty much put everything together that I had been doing in practice. But I, I even got out of the car and I, I looked over to Stan and after it was announced that it was 100. And I told Stan, I was like, man, it didn't even feel that good. Because <laughs> like, I knew like that in my mind, it didn't feel like a perfect run. But wow. going back in like the first time I looked at it, I was like, oh, that was pretty solid, you know. And I could kind of see like why the judges would have rewarded me for what I had done. But then, like I said, going back and, and looking at it multiple times, I could see what were like I was feeling the mistakes that I made that I thought that I made that were more that seemed bigger to me than what actually showed up on like a yeah. recording or whatever. Like you, you probably felt like you were five feet off that outer clip instead of crazy one mm -hmm. feet, right? Well, even on like, yeah, even on like the, the entry, um, like I was watching James Dean's wall, wall like ent entry and like wall rides. And I was like, dude, that dude's killing it. And then I look at mine and I'm like, oh man, I'm probably like a foot off. But mm -hmm. I guess from like the angle that the camera was at, it didn't look as impressive maybe as like the angle from what the judges were looking at. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean. Yeah. And I'm curious to talk to the judges again too, to find out like, you know, I think that they had to break the uh, the Cold War of never having a 100-point run. That's not the right term. But, you know, break break the ice of, of never having another 100-point run because, you know, how you define perfection again. But I think it's – they might say that I'm completely right or completely wrong or somewhere in the middle on this. But it's like um, – it's it's the perfect run for that track for that day, for yeah. the crowd, not the perfect run of all time. Right. I bet I bet this will now open the ability to see hundreds again soon. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, one of you guys got another hundred before the end of the season. I mean, I think the big thing is is as long as the drivers really listen to what the judges are looking for and try to drive to the judges instead of trying to get the judges to judge how they and, want yeah. to drive <laughs> and appreciate their line that they are doing they throw a nasty angle and backies yeah. in there because yeah, they think it's sick as fuck and they're not wrong it probably is sick as fuck but the judges said oh hey we want to see this specifically then do that, that do that thing that's probably one of the biggest uh, misunderstandings uh especially for the people who who's watching the show uh, online and i mean it probably been like the people who's at the at the stadiums because nobody really gets to watch the driver's meeting and the, the back and forth between you guys and the judges and that whole, uh, all right, guys, this is what we want to see. This is what, uh, you know, like we designed the track this way. And then you guys go like, well, can we do it this way instead? And there's like a back and forth, like, oh, we think it's going to be better. Like, it's not like, like, like a dictatorship where they're like, this is what you guys need to do. If you don't want to do it, you're out. Something like that, right? I mean, I think like a lot of people don't well, know I mean, that there's a... Honestly, I feel like the, like the drivers should respect the judges more in that aspect. I think there's some drivers that really try to put the judges in a box <laughs> and like try to get them to judge what's like best for their car, their yeah. style and that sort of thing. But we're all, in the, if you look, think about it, we're all on the same, like, um, like pl playground. And as long yeah. as, like, the judges say, okay, these are the boundaries, we all have to play in that area. So yeah. instead of trying to, like, work so hard to get it to work in somebody's benefit, just like, hey, this is what they want to see. Let's just run it. And, you know, the best man wins. What do you think about the alleged closing of wall? And that might be the last 100-point run there. Uh, so I don't like, actually, I just heard today that the announcement was actually fake news from yeah. <laughs> the company that was trying to like get the housing development there. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to put that out to get their housing development, um, approved. But I also heard that Jersey shore doesn't want like a low income that much low income like yeah. housing oh. uh so yeah. i think that that's not happening yeah. however you heard me say alleged because i i haven't heard confirmation from uh the drift ads or, or fd because uh you know just because one agency that might not even be an agency or just someone reports it doesn't make it real like very well could be real but what are you what were you about to say um oh i mean i don't know i guess like jersey is 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 a cool track but i feel like uh, it would be awesome to run on 
like E Town or the one year that we or one or two years that we ran on E Town was like super rad. Um, I don't know. It'd be cool if I was like yeah. the last person to score like, yeah, right. there. But if I got to go back next year, I obviously have a lot of weight on my shoulders to back that up. <laughs> right. Well, the New Jersey track too has seen better days as well. They had to change the layout halfway through because the same spot that has been chunking up over the past few years just got like chunkier and chunkier and the asphalt ripped up and it probably needs many tens of thousands of dollars of repairs to be spec and, again and they aren't like putting the money into it on like and that's the sad part is like uh, we bring the biggest crowd that they have all year and they can't like a day or two before they throw down some quick crete and think it's going to be good I mean, our <laughs> colors are, are making a lot of power and grip and yeah. it's just not working and i you know, it, it kind of worked out that we ran it that way because if we would have ran it the other way, who knows if I would have been able to get a 100-point run, but all things yeah. worked out and, and whatnot. But I, I wouldn't be sad if we went to another track. But yeah. We um, actually talked about E-Town a little bit. Um, it seems like that's like the... Well, I'm sorry, the I, lost, that... I lost my headphones. I got distracted. <laughs> what I was going to say is um, we... we um, we talked about E-Town, but I was worried that there wouldn't be enough existing infrastructure already there and that it would cost a lot of money to um, bring in all the gear and bleachers and uh, connectivity and, and you name it to make that track uh, work for it. But I don't know enough about it to, to have an opinion on it. Yeah, I, I think that's what the always been the concern is, is bringing all the stands in and all that stuff. And obviously that's behind the scenes and none of us really know like what that yeah. costs or entails or, you know, I don't know if there's stand companies in that area right. that do that or not I mean, and it's know. not even the bleachers that's just an example i mean bleachers have to be brought in for st louis have to be brought in for texas um but i mean there's there's the infrastructure of toilets there's the infrastructure of mm. electricity there's the infrastructure of water and vendors and that's true. a thousand other things to to do there um there's the parking there's you name it and i think e-town definitely checks a lot of those boxes i'd be curious though how they'd also want to run it what do you how did I didn't even know that FD was there uh, previously, being just a kind of dude that got into the sport in like 2012, 2013. But how did they run it previously? Do you remember? Um, it was like a long entry into like a long sweeping left hander. Um, the the know. same way that they run most of the events. Like you watch E10 videos, I imagine every now and then. Uh, I think so. I think so. I mm. I honestly. <laughs> It's funny, like a super crazy event. Um, Brian Wilkerson ended up loaning me his car because nice. I was in the middle of blowing up a million rotaries. Um, <laughs> go figure. Back in your um, ARC 7 days? Yeah, back in my ARC 7 days. I, I made like one parade lap and blew up my car on the parade lap <laughs> and um, proceeded to like freak out like, oh, what am I going to do? And then Brian Wilkerson was bringing up his car like the zombie mobile um, and he was just putting it in Exidy's booth to put on display. And I hit him up. I'm like, yo, dude, is there any way I can drive your car? Because my car is blown up. And I just came from his shop blowing up like 10 other motors. So he knew like I wasn't joking around. So we spent all of practice uh, swapping all the safety stuff and everything from my car to his car to get it to pass tech. And I'm rolling out to tech. <laughs> And uh, we forgot to latch the hood pins oh. and <laughs> smash the windshield. Uh, so, so we basically like missed all of practice. We found a place to re, um, replace the windshield. We tr went out in the trailer, got the windshield replaced, came back just in time to like run down to tech, got the car teched, and it was my turn to qualify. Oof, so I, I went out there without any practice. I had done one parade lap and i actually think i threw down a 96 which was pretty <laughs> rad you say zombie car are you talking about the bqs 13 no it was the i think it was zombie two point oh i don't know it was um like the vvti um sr20 it was like the the badass like sr20 and it had like a borg warner turbo and um i don't know it was sweet it ripped really good and uh so i I qualified number one for the unqualified drivers because that was back then when it was like if you're 16, you were already pre-qualified for Saturday. And if you were like 17 through whatever, you had to like qualify to qualify. Mm -hmm. So I qualified to qualify. And then I went out um, on Saturday and I think I think my first qualifying run, I blew up his motor. Oh, no. 
Uh, rotaries and SRs are not. They don't have a reputation for being the most reliable. Uh, it was a it was a hard event, <laughs> but yeah. I just remember that like one lap that I got was super sick on that track. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, I guess we'll see what happens. We won't know <laughs> until uh, we talk to those that do know, or they make an announcement, of course. And you don't have a rotary anymore. Like you think you have probably one of the most solid uh, power plants and cars. I mean, I, I I'm just I'm just so pumped on seeing how reliable the the ford platform has been recently how exciting it is to look at it i remember looking at mustangs more like ah they just look like big fat solid axle and now they look just like lean you know like uh very muscular but agile like yeah, very the, the, dynamic the mustangs between you and chelsea and vaughn i think are some of the best dialed and fastest cars on the track and i mean as far as Development, I think most people, no one would really be able to argue that Vaughn probably has the most developed cars on the track, too. So it's like they've made them to be what they are. He's got probably the, one of the most expensive cars on the track. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But you, uh, the fact that you can uh, still keep up and in many times beat those dudes with a uh, much more, I don't want to say grassroots program because you're definitely not grassroots, but uh, humble. I don't know. I well, I mean, like I think like my program is just like I try to make it more approachable for most people. Like I don't run some unicorn motor that's like sixty thousand dollar race motor. I run a like Ford Performance crate motor that you can order out of mm -hmm. the catalog, and I run a Roush Performance blower that comes on their stage three Mustang. Like all stuff that's streetcar stuff, you yeah. Know? Stuff that you would do if you're like hot rodding your streetcar, um, and. I just I try to keep it more like relatable to most people. I mean, I'm running like an Andrews uh, dog box, and but I'm still running like a, a nine inch um, differential. I'm not uh, doing quick change. The new car I'm doing a quick change finally. What but, new car? I'm um, building a new car. Ooh. New chassis, new new car, new suspension stuff. What year is your current? Uh, 15. Oh, it's that old. It's yeah, funny. It's... The body still looks, you know, newish. Well, it, well it, I mean, it's the it same the latest, generation, yeah. but that's why I went back to like the 15 to 17 front end yeah. because it's actually like a 15. But um, yeah, I mean, I just try to, I'm even sort of running a stock ECU right now. Um, really? I have, <laughs> yeah, I have uh, the new motor is um, all set up for the link uh, engine management, which is going to give us a ton more um just uh, just a whole bunch more. Yeah, there you go. A, a bunch more advantage that we've kind of left on the table. Um, it, But it has been, like, mega reliable. I mean, we've been making good power. We're still competitive. But there's, I think there's a lot of things that we've left on the table and that we're not taking advantage of. And it's about that time to really step up our game. And I think Link is going to help out a ton with that. I think the suspension changes that we're going to be making will help out a ton. And then also just my approach to build um, instead of – doing like tons of gussets and making the car super heavy. Um, I worked with Anderson Composites to get some more carbon on the car. I went really bare minimum with my fabrication, like the cage work and brackets and just everything in general. I, I was very minimalistic on my approach to building the chassis. Um, so I'm excited for it. I think it yeah. should be making more power. Uh, it should be a couple a couple hundred pounds lighter. And then... Yeah. Just everything that we've learned with the chassis development, suspension development. I don't know, I'm excited for it. I still yeah, think and this current car has four years on it, which in FD years is a lot of years. Yeah, it's had a couple big hits. It's it's definitely come back from the dead a couple of times. Uh, I mean, the first event that I went to in Long Beach, I wadded the front end of it. So that was really awesome. <laughs> and, um, I still think uh, that was one of the. One of the best uh, Hoonigan um, build biologies. I think it was one of the mm. first ones they did with it was with, with your car, right? It was the first one, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So it it, it was just such an in depth look into uh, pro car, and I think I, the perf the the best part on the whole video is when you say like, yeah, I know I'm still running, you know, a lot of off the shelf parts. You can just get them from from AutoZone or whatever. Like it was like. Hold on, hold on. This is a NA uh, American car, like you know, just widely available. Supercharged, right? Yeah. Is it is it supercharged or 
Yeah, it's super, my bad. Supercharged. Okay, what about it's, but still, it's not you know like you don't have like a crazy uh, piping and you know like it's still a very what? basic. Did they figure out why it's the most loud and obnoxious car there? <laughs> I think it's because of the Cook's headers and straight pipe exhaust. Yeah. I don't know. It, I mean, it I, sounds I, it sounds good. It's just so loud. Mm. I've said it a thousand times before. It's small, I think it's because it's small displacement. Mm. Because it doesn't have like a, it's not like a deep sound because it's only a 302 cubic inch engine. Do and have, it's got a lot of output. Do you have the flat I plane? I only a five liter. Do you have the, fa yeah. the flat plane engine? No, it's cross plane. It's oh, okay. A, Regular coyote, not a voodoo. Got it. Yeah, but um, I mean, like I remember when we had uh we had Joao on the show, and he was talking about that his idea of like bringing a like a burly stock C7, and everybody was like, yeah, you know, stock cars this is gonna be the the new trend on Formula Drift, and like you don't need to overbuild. And obviously, I mean, that hasn't seemed to work for him. But in yeah. your case, your car is not overbuilt. It's like well, a, you can't like bring a knife to a gunfight you know I yeah mean, you can't be so you can't be naive in the fact that uh like i'm gonna bring a stone stock car and be competitive there's there's certain things that you kind of have to have now you have to have probably eight to nine hundred well you have to have the power to weight ratio yeah so power to weight is a lot you gotta have um the steering you've got to have the tunability of suspension and you know, all that and the balance it's got to be balanced right yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like that C7 is probably a great platform. You know, Matt uh, Field is yeah. doing really well in C6. Like that car is a ripper. Um, but again, like you look at Matt's car and how developed it is compared to um, the C7. Like yeah. it's not. And, not, not and that C7, like. that C7 has been worked at, at Matt Field's shop as well. So, I mean, they're both being worked by the same person. Yeah, it's just yeah. the the level of customization. I mean, Matt Field has carbon Kevlar, and you know, like Dude, his car is like yeah, it's insane. Built to the yeah, nines. but your what car. Do you I mean, I think like your, your car. Like, I mean, you have what like like custom carbon fiber parts and yeah, Anderson much, that's it. made. Um, I worked with Anderson Composites to do a wide body to like my specifications. I basically set up my suspension, took it down there, and we made. Uh, wide body that fit my like wheels and tires um, so it was su super cool to work with them and develop that um, and since then they've you know done a carbon roof for me and you know like just a bunch of more carbon stuff so I I'm excited about that um, it's gonna take some more weight off the car and and uh, it just gives it like a cool look I mean having like a full carbon car is definitely like yeah. something that I've always dreamed of what uh what tire width are you running now uh, 255 in the front and 295 in the rear. The top gotcha. and 615 nice. And what so, do you have I mean, as far as like angle kit and stuff like that? Um, well, I developed the the front angle kit. I prototyped it, and then I work with I1 Suspension, and they produce it um, out of Iowa. Uh, that's actually Tim and Dalton's company. Um, they're uh, on my crew, um, so they've done. They did all the development on the rear suspension, and and we're actually developing um, together a new rear suspension set up for the new car. So it's all basically done in house, um, between myself and, and Tim and Dalton, um, over there. So it's, um, you know, it's not like wise fab or part shop or, or anything like that. It's, it's all stuff that we've developed. I mean, I've been building angle kits since like Oh eight, um, for FC and, and for other stuff, S one, S one nine seven Mustangs and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I got the S550, I basically just cut up the knuckle, moved a bunch of stuff, made like an adjustable knuckle, moved a bunch of stuff around, played with it for like two weeks, figuring out like how I wanted things. And we custom fabricated a knuckle, custom fabricated lower control arms and, and all the other stuff. And uh, I'm still running like Ford Performance track pack uh, sway bars. So I'm still trying to use stuff that's still streetable. Um, and if it works with like stock brakes and, and all that, we're running lighter weight Willwood brakes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm very much hands on on all that stuff. Nobody makes like an angle kit for the new Mustang. And yeah, it's interesting that I know that Vaughn and those guys, uh, I should say, I know, I believe that they make their own stuff as well. It's like all you Mustang dudes are kind of building your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, um, I, I, you know, they've, 
they've done their own stuff. I think there's like one other company that's like made some stuff. I think it's very similar to what Vaughn and Chelsea are running. But mm. you know, I think that their approach to getting angle and their front geometry is just a different theory of like my approach to things. So our suspension, obviously, like if you look at the cars, looks completely different. Um, but you know, they get some pretty good angle, but they have a lot more like caster and and that sort of thing. And I get really good angle and I don't have like that much caster. I think I have a more um, traditional style uh, front angle setup. Yeah, your angle in a lot of these photos uh, on your Instagram <laughs> and, and, you know, just watching you out there, it's definitely Dude, that, pretty extreme. If that, you photo, got one more. that photo where uh, I think um, Jeff Jones is kind of yeah. like tapping you on the back. Jeff and... Jones went into the wall and then you were just uh, cruising out front with full <laughs> luck. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that was that was a pretty crazy picture. Like, like 90, de from 90 degrees of angle. Uh, before we move on to some more questions, uh, Foxy Pappy in the YouTube Super Chat. Uh, if you're listening live and you're in the YouTube, you can Super Chat. Make sure your question gets through to Justin. We will answer all Super Chats. It doesn't matter how mean. It doesn't matter how <laughs> poor your wording is um, or insulting. We're going we're gonna to ask it. That's not true. Don't do that. But if you are listening live, you can Super Chat. Uh, Foxy Pappy says, Justin... Are you go? Are you joining the Stangs for the Area 51 raid? <laughs> there's a Stang 51 raid. Oh, the, 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 there's the raid. You know about the raid. Yep. I think September 20th, if I'm correct, is the raid oh, on oh, Area, the 51. Area 51 massacre. Is that? Oh, <laughs> Justin, Justin, you can't be throwing that kind of bad voodoo into the air before the raid. Uh, have you seen that meme of like the time traveler? Maybe I've it's seen that, a lot like, of Area oh. 51 memes. <laughs> like, oh, what are you, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing the Area 51 raid. I'm like, oh, the Area 51 massacre. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that I if, know, you join, if you join the Stangs, they might have a chance. Honestly, though, like, think about it. Like, think about it. You're going. You want to like raid an active military like testing facility. It is a yeah, but the, the Naruto runners will run faster than the bullets, Justin. I don't know what you're not understanding. I, and and the Mustangs are going to take... They can be like, oh, well... We How are they going to kill you if they can't hit you, Justin? The Naruto <laughs> run is faster than bullets. What's the Naruto one? <laughs> Naruto that's, when you, that's when you run with your arms back all the way, I believe. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Paco's... Yeah, look at Paco. He's okay, doing okay. that. So, gotcha. so, yeah, that's a Naruto run. If you do that, you run faster, faster than bullets, some might say. And then the Kyles will be out there. Um, I think I might be with the Kyles. I'm not sure. Uh, are you, Paco... <laughs> It was like Kyle. Obviously, yeah, obviously, I'm going. I'm going to be with the Kyles. Paco, where, who are you going to be with? Do you think? Is Kevin uh, going to be there? Yeah, Kevin will be there. I'll be with the Kevins. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, that, that's the Kevins. other thing. Like, I mean, there was actually a proposal about bringing a bunch of drones, you know, to to distract, yeah. you know, the all the Area 51 military to start shooting at the drones. Then that's where the Naruto runners start going in. Yeah. There's a lot of options, Justin. Oh, yeah. We just need you. I feel we like need they, you out there. I feel like they have a lot of military like surplus out there and probably lots of bombs. And yeah, I'll I be saw, watching it on social. <laughs> I saw a good post of like some uh, actual military dude uh, at Area 51, I believe, that took a photo of his face. And he's like, I can't fucking believe I'm about to go to a full base meeting about a raid. That, <laughs> about an internet meme. <laughs> But you know I mean, what? I, I think Facebook. I bet there, there will be a party out there, or something going down. I don't think anyone's going to storm the base. Um, but I, I mean, bet, I think I bet... like bringing like a. What about bringing like a hot dog cart out there? No, we said a white claw this. cart. We yeah. said we're going to buy a all white claw the white Island. claws in all of Nevada, and we're going to sell them out of the back of a van for white five claw bucks a pop. Island. We're going to get rich. Yes. Ching. But I, um, actually, uh, Facebook deleted the event. I think yesterday no or today. Way. Yeah, it well, is. Well, there's going to be a thousand other pop-ups. <laughs> it is. It is. Well, yeah, but like the the actual event, I think had like somewhere like fifty thousand people confirmed attendance, which doesn't I mean fifty yeah. thousand people are going to show up. A million. Oh, or something like that. It was insane. Yeah, it's over and nine thousand for sure. It's over nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was seven. And uh, but yeah, I mean, I believe like even the uh, like some of the mili like the army issued a. A warning just saying like hey you know like if you attack if you try to if, no, if you could go onto an active military base yeah you will be arrested you will be or shot. arrested or shot yeah. so like yeah. no bullshit so uh, uh, before i definitely want to talk about uh new st louis layout and all that stuff but let's go back in time still again at um 
Washington, Monroe. You are no stranger to uh, incidents there. I forget. I, I, I should just write it down and have it as a sticky note on my monitor. The T-Bone incident. Was that you and um, Conrad, or was it Conrad Tyler? and McQuarrie? Was it, Tyler? it was you I and Tyler. Know. No, I don't, I don't remember anything yeah, about that. Yeah, you remember that. There you go. It was <laughs> you and Tyler. All right, Justin and Tyler. Tyler and Justin. Got it. I'm going to remember that forever. So... The track is no stranger to controversies and issues in t Bonin. Um, have you watched uh, Vaughn and Gucci's battle? Have you watched uh, Chelsea and Forsberg's battle? Of course I have. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> all right, start with Vaughn and Gucci. What do you think about Vaughn and Gucci? Vaughn saying that he was reacting to. And then, by the way, this is not the last time we'll talk about this because we're actually going to talk to Vaughn next week. So the Mustang Boys back to back. Spoiler and then, alert. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about controversies. I, I imagine there's going to be a whole new thing to talk about after St. Louis, but let's. I, these are important moments in our sport, I think, that we must address um, for the growth uh, of everyone as a whole, and we shouldn't just not talk about them or bury them, but sorry. Vaughn and Goosh, what do you think? Well, obviously, I wasn't in the driver's seat in either of their cars, so this is only speculation, and I can only go off of what I would basically feel in, if I was in their situation, potentially. Um so don't hold me to any of these answers, but I'll, yeah, these are all, these are the boys talking and yeah. That's what it is. Um, so going off of the fact that uh, a correction was made because, like Vaughn thought that uh, Gucci was gonna like T-bone him, mm-hmm. I can't really get on board with that because I feel like it, what I would have done is. I would have gone wide, like I would have stayed on the race line and there would have been like plenty of time to avoid contact or whatever. But it seemed like he yanked the e-brake, like over rotated and then drove back into, into Gucci, really. I mean, <laughs> like the contact was made like off track behind the clipping point almost or something. I don't know. It was really, it was really awkward. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think that Gucci would have, wanted to like total his car like t-boning yeah, of course Vaughn. i mean he's he's running his own program now he's got to pay for all those repairs i know that he wouldn't have done that and at that point he was already straight he was on the brakes um i mean you can so turn it, into i've been in the situation drifting many times where your car <laughs> turns into a, like a, a bullet or an arrow like your your full lock the brakes are locked and you're just like moving in the direction that you're moving and it's yeah like, but his tires weren't at full lock yeah he was, exactly so he, he was going straight I mean, he, he had, like, full brakes and all that stuff. I mean, I feel like if, if Vaughn would have just stayed online, gone out, like, wide where he was supposed to go wide and then come back into the clipping point, all contact yeah. would have been but the avoided. The question is, did he see it and avoid it and make the wrong avoidance mis- decision? Or, I guess, the right one, if you say that he didn't get hit. So, I guess he did make the right avoidance decision. Do you think that, do you think that motherfucker's straight up lying? <laughs> or do you think that he thinks that he... Uh, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he believes what he believes. I mean, yeah. that's Vaughn. He's very, you know. I'm not he, accusing him of lying about it by any means. So no, I mean, but I he believes what he believes, and and nobody's going to tell him anything different from that. And hmm. um, uh, Gucci's definitely going to believe what he believes. And looking from the outside in, I think that the contact been, was avoidable. I think that there was mistakes that were made on both of their parts, and I think the judges made the right call. Um, yeah. at, at the end of the day, I mean. Vaughn was off track. Uh, I don't think it had anything to do with Gucci necessarily. I think Gucci messed up on his own. And, yeah. you know, it just shook out how it shook out. Yeah. And what do you think about Forsberg and Chelsea? Man, just all the Mustang bros. Um, I know. <laughs> um, I mean, that one's definitely, like, harder to tell. Uh, I can see Chelsea's point of view because, obviously, in the replays, it looks like um, – Chris's uh, tire stopped, but I did mm-hmm. talk to Chris and he explained that he'd had a downshift at that point because um, he was going through that a little bit different line. He made a mistake in the line. The the car got bogged down, so he had a downshift. And if you're downshifting, yes, it's going to like shock the tires. Uh, same mm-hmm. thing that I was doing off the break, off the bank. I was um, coming in fourth gear and instead of e-braking, I was shift locking into third which could have looked like an e-brake, um, but I was like just slamming into the third gear, which ended up biting me in the butt because mm-hmm. it broke against Dean. 
So we'll learn from that mistake. But, yeah. um, you know, I think Chelsea was coming in pretty hot. I think uh, there was a slight hesitation because the car was acting differently on Forsberg's behalf. So you had to make an adjustment to keep drifting. And I think it was just a, a miscalculation on Chelsea's part. And it just happened. I mean, that's a tricky part of the um part of the track you know Chelsea's coming he comes in hot dude he's nailed Peter a couple times in practice so you know he's he drives hard and you know sometimes he needs to maybe leap dial it back from 11 a little bit um yeah that's literally what I've said every every time I talk about Chelsea and that uh, I think he's a potential champion if he learns to dial back one notch and it's his driving is insane but he drives a little bit too hard and um yeah so I I when we recorded our last show, I hadn't had a chance to uh, talk to Chris about it because it was just after the event. We were talking to Dylan on the show. I actually didn't want it yet. I wanted to like get my own opinion on it. And um, you know, the opinion I had was I don't think Chris is a cheater that would intentionally sandbag in that way. And I, I mean, uh, I, I, it's really hard for me to think that anybody would intentionally to do, yeah. do that. I mean, you got to live with yourself at the end of the day. And if you want to like intentionally cheat to win, and if you win a championship or win an event or even a battle at that point, it's kind of a crappy like yeah. mentality to have. Like, oh, I'm going to win at all costs. Like, I don't care if I cheat. I'm going to beat you. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody really goes goes about it that way. I yeah. think yeah. sometimes things get tense. There's, you know, you're, you get yeah. pumped up in situations. Uh, and you obviously don't see other people's perspectives and you don't want to listen to other people's perspectives. And You've never yelled at anyone before, have you? <laughs> not, not in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting to think that uh, Chelsea, in his uh, very inappropriate fit of rage, didn't consider or just didn't, you know, give time or space to think that uh, Chris and his car are fallible. The idea yeah, was I mean, that he is had so much control and and planned a maneuver that was very clearly seen by cameras uh, that that was an intentional maneuver was, you know, and instead thinking that it was an intentional maneuver instead of a mechanical issue or a driver issue, a driver not being 100 percent perfect or a car in this case um, having an issue with shifting or. The fact that um, I'm trying, I, I don't want to say exactly the words they told me because I'm going to get it wrong because I don't know everything uh, about the car and the scene. But I do remember him talking to Grid Life after I had like 30 claws at this point, saying that the Mustang, the RTR Mustangs, especially all of you guys in Mustangs, but the RTRs especially are the most like hooked up, craziest, fastest cars out there. Maybe not the fastest section to section um, or the full track because I know a lot of the spotters now time the cars to see how fast they are through a section. But he was saying that timed on the bank. The Mustang was like uh, over a second faster than his car in in their fastest practice laps. So he, um, you know, they turned the the Z up to like ultimate kill mode. They turned um, I forget if he said nitrous or anti lag up, like full kill mode, and it was messing with the RPMs and shifting. And I think he said as a result, um, the RPMs uh, when he went to downshift like stayed. Up. They didn't. They didn't drop because the anti lag was just popping and going. So the mm. RPMs didn't drop. So they went to go slam it into third, and it didn't go the first time. And this all took place in you know a quarter of a second, but it didn't go the first time. So he punched it again, and it went. But as a result, you know the car, the tires don't make smoke for a tenth of a second. And then it looks like uh, if you're gonna nitpick and think that someone is a cheater, it looks like oh that guy intentionally sandbagged me. When it sounds like, and I think he said he was running uh, in car camera as well. Yeah, but you know, like he doesn't the, have to defend himself in this way slow, if he doesn't want to. Well, the that, that's the thing, though. I mean, like we get into <clears throat> situations where we have to, like later on in the in the event, especially with not having Friday night practice. There's mm. a, a lot of times that we can't try out like the ultra kill mode like setting. Mm. Like um, what we can practice in practice is maybe like kill mode, but. There's situations that you get into the later rounds and you have to dial in your car. Like you have to put more grip into it and you're kind of going in blind. You don't have any practice. You don't know what the car's going to feel like and you don't know how it's going to react. So you get to a point where you dial in all the grip. And if it does something that you're not used to, like different than your muscle memory, it's going to make, uh, you're going to have to like make adjustments on the fly. And, and yeah. sometimes it can, sometimes it works like flawlessly mm. and other times it'll, it'll catch you a little off and 
And I think it just happened to catch Chris off. I don't think he yeah. intentionally was like, oh, I'm going to like break check this dude. <laughs> um, but I, I know like in the heat of the battle, I'm sure Chelsea was like, oh, F this guy. Um, but then again, I think that you need to take a second and maybe not approach e- each other like the way that <laughs> I heard that people approach people. And yeah, uh, I, I, I think don't you've know. been I don't on, think that's you've been on the receiving end of people approaching people too. So. And he's like also approached people. Kicks. What do you mean? Huh? Yeah, well, you got your car kicked. <laughs> you've also been in people's face, and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you about this because. Uh, before I ever talked to you, I was like, that fucking JTP is a goddamn hothead. <laughs> and, then, and then now that I've talked to you, it's like, oh, you're you're a pretty gentle boy most of the time. But, you know, you have been in, I think, of like half the altercations that I think of at the track. And uh, I think like half of them have involved you. <laughs> like, no, not that many. Yeah, over no, over the course of my, of, of my tenure with uh, drifting professionally, you know, I think I'm on like year seven now-ish. It's like, you know, Justin Justin gets in a lot of uh, issues with people. And, of course, I was on Vaughn's team for a while, so I, I was I was personal on the ground there. And you and Vaughn had your issues for a while. Did you but it's you like, see anything there? I, saw, I may have seen a thing or two. I don't yeah, know. But, so what happened? I don't remember. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously the thing with, it, with Daigo, I, I yeah. was undefeated at that point, and I felt like he – like checked up on me and screwed me up and mm-hmm. yeah, I tried to tell him in English and he had he didn't care because he couldn't understand me except um, he could he just doesn't want to I just yelled at uh Robbie basically yeah. and Robbie was like <laughs> yeah he doesn't understand. translating <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I didn't even swear I just like was I was telling him he know what he he knew what he did and yeah. he was just shook his head like silly white man <laughs> oh man but uh yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been in all. I don't. I really try to stay away from it, honestly. Um, but you get, we put a lot into this, man. I, of I course, mean, it's everything. We try so hard to win. Yeah, and competition is so heavy right now, and it's one of those things where if you're not passionate about it, then why are you here? Right. I just hope that there is some. Um... Uh, reconciliation attempted uh, on on Chelsea's part. And again, I don't have the full story. I haven't talked to Chelsea, but all I have is uh, a lot of third person perspective um, from third and fourth and fifth through a hundredth person perspective of people that were there and did say things that uh, were said. And I hope that there is a uh, a, a level of reconciliation, but he's his own dude and uh, he's allowed to do what he wishes, but public opinion will follow accordingly. (laughs) I think there's definitely different, like, probably better ways of approaching things. I think maybe, <laughs> maybe Vaughn's approach uh, after the incident could have been handled better. I think what I heard that Chelsea did could have been handled better. Um, but again, we're all humans. We all make mistakes. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. that the, the one that, you know, I'm excited to talk to Vaughn about it next week uh, is... It's like, how much time do you wait to make statements or to do these things? Obviously, the thing to do almost in any situation that's going to involve a fight, whether physical or or verbal or whatever, is like, calm the fuck down first and see, like, do I really want to punch this guy? Do I really want to call this dude this thing? And, and of course, that's the perfect enlightened thing to say is, should we really get in this in this war? (laughs) But then a lot, I think a lot of the time after a 10 minutes break or a day's break or or having a beer with the dude, you're like, oh, probably not. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, maybe after 24 hours, like, you know what? I really do want to punch this guy in the fucking face. Then, <laughs> then you can do it. But uh, I, I think that's like why, like, if you can go yeah. like 24 hours and like really like, like stew on like that before you make like a poor decision or something or or just a knee jerk reaction on things, I, I think most of the time it'll be like, ah, it's really not worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but again, that's that's the whole thing about uh humans and emotions and adrenaline and passion is uh you can't really control all that most of the time and you you do the decisions that you do in the moment but it is uh i I think universally agreed it's always wiser to uh, try to cool off before you make decisions or having people in your your camp that maybe be the voice of reason that holds you back from making (laughs) yeah that is one of those things that i always kind of like felt that it was is counterproductive on a lot of teams when your own team is the one encouraging you to go yeah oh go tell that per you know like make this post for sure you definitely need to surround yourself with people that will keep you level-headed and honestly i think that's another thing that i i have now in in my in my camp is um i have a lot of voice of reason 
and um, they just keep me keep my mind right. And even when I get pumped up on things or whatever, they kind of like calm me down and and uh, keep me focused on what yeah. I need to be focused on. Yeah, I think I, I think I told you last time you were on the show, and uh, I mean I think it it's I'm telling it I'm saying it again because it seems like the the past couple of years you've been like such a chill. Very, you you look happy. You look comfortable. You look like you have like the right people with you, the right card. Like it, it's like you're so, um, I don't know. You look, you're just more zen, and your driving is just showing it. Yeah. Well, I think it just goes to like one. one I'm, I'm I'm having fun again, and this goes back to what I think uh, James and Peter have brought back to our sport. They brought back. I like when they first came. I kind of like observed from the uh, the sidelines last year. I hung out with them uh, quite a bit, um, just in the pits, like or, or in between battles or whatever, and, and just kind of I was like interested about those guys. I was like, what's going on with these guys? Because they're having so much fun, and they just look like they're fun to be around. So I hung out with them a bunch, and I was like, it kind of like regenerated me into really loving the sport again. Because there was there was some some years that I was just like, man, like this is getting like overwhelming. Like my team wasn't like super supportive. Um, but now like I have supportive guys around me. Um, I'm really looking at the positives in the sport. I'm having fun driving. I've got my style back. I'm not like, Oh, just go super fast, pull the e-brake, go super fast, like low angle, go super fast, like get away from the guy. Now it's like, just drive. And my guys are giving me a car that I can, drive with angle, drive how I want, but still like be competitive and be fast. So I think that's what's changed in me and my team. And that's why it looks like from the outside that I'm having more fun because I am generally. Yeah. And, and there is, I forget uh, how much we went into it on the last time you were here about a year ago, but there is, you were the calmer JTP. Like you seemed like Paco just said more Zen, more, uh, more in tune with the, uh, the earthly aura around you. Like what, what caused that again? Because you are um, much calmer than you used to be. I think uh, just going to church a lot and my my wife calming me down. And, <laughs> you know, I don't know, just being happy that I have a healthy boy and I don't know, just knowing yeah. that life, like, uh, life so uh, many good things and to, to be thankful for. Yeah, you're a pretty lucky dude being in the position you're in, and not that you don't work hard for it all, but uh, still, you're lucky to be born when you were born in the place you were born <laughs> and uh, able to pursue the things you want to pursue. And Th you thanks, mom and dad. Thanks, my dad. <laughs> Thanks, uh, uh, you know, everyone around me that, that has enabled this and so on and so forth. Yeah. What is up with St. Louis? What do you think of the new track? It looks challenging to me. It looks, it looks like there is some, it looks a very, like a very technical course. So initially, um, from like the picture that Chelsea posted with like the scribble on it and the overhead that Formula D posted, it looked like it was going to be super tight, like a second gear. And, uh, I had heard that somebody had like tested out it was like a second gear track and like a go kart track and this and that and the other yeah. thing and I was really worried about it. Um, actually, getting on the track today and driving around in a Ford oh, you, dually. Yeah, you didn't drift it, but you're able to drive the track. Oh, but we took a dually out there and we were driving around and. Um, you did drift the dually. No, <laughs> ah, no, I, okay. no, we. I wish, but no. Um, <laughs> it actually looks like it's gonna be real sick. Um, yeah, I bet it, look, it looks cool. I just say challenging because you know it goes from a long sweeper to kind of like a weird looking manji to fast again. It, <clears> go, it looks like it's like fast, slow, fast, slow, which is cool. It's very technical. It's a progressive and track. It's going to be super technical. There are yeah. some sketchy parts of the track, like the inside clip one is potentially sketchy because there's like a K rail there that you have to like clip the front of the car on. So I don't know exactly how the judges are going to set that up i'm sure that they're going to keep safety in mind on that but then you're um so you enter and it, initially it didn't look like a very big run-up but yeah after i drove it a couple times i'm like okay we'll be like good into third the outside zone is pretty cool you flick to like a um touch and go that's on like a candy cane strips so you can't like get too much up on the candy cane because it's gonna really like upset the car yeah but especially then front have, tires it'll mess you up well no it's a it's a rear touch and go Oh, is it? So oh, you, like, that, that explains why. Yeah, because I'm looking at you guys can check out on the FD Instagram. Um, yeah, I was thinking that that was a touch and go. Yeah, that makes sense. It's an outer touch and go. So that could really upset you. But then you're going through this like rubber room, like 
tires on both sides and you have to like throw a bunch of angles to slow down but still keep speed to make the the link back um through interclip one outer zone two and then you're kind of like going around this long sweeping right and it's like blind and then you have a touch and go on that wall that you yeah. can't really see coming out of interclip one going into outer zone two um and then i think that they're changing it to an inner clip at the end which seemed like it flowed better uh, yeah. but you know it, it's going to be interesting because we make a ton of smoke if the wind's not blowing really bad then it this that smoke may linger and we may be completely blind going into yeah. that second part of the track so that's yeah or some, if the wind blows a little bit the other you know in the wrong direction and pushes it over yeah, yeah so it could be really bad for tandem i don't know it's, it's something that's <laughs> yeah it's just no gonna be does. interesting but it looks like a super fun track to drive yeah, it looks i think cool. it'll be better for because last year it was just like whoever had the fastest car yeah it was it was a drag race and it was it was fun to watch don't get me wrong because it was such a fast track it was very fde in my mind it was very texasy um mm -hmm. i'm excited for this because it looks not slow but it looks technical this looks like it's really going to show off who's got their car dialed who's got the driving dialed um you know i just hope that it's clear like we talked about earlier from the judges i just hope it's clear what they expect and it's clear what that line is and it's clear what a 100 point run looks like you know and i imagine there's going to be some weird scores coming in there from top drivers and i don't know i'm excited to see it'll be it'll be a fun watch yeah it's it's i don't, I don't know it's it, <laughs> everybody's on the same playing field and I, I would assume that the judges will make some small adjustments to the track. Um, but I think it's, it kind of is what it is. Like, just driving it over and over a couple times in, in our, like, pit truck. Every time I drove, like, just through the track, I was like, oh, I, I'm really starting to see it now. Like, yeah. that it, I think it's going to be super fun to, uh, especially yeah. for tandem. Yeah, I want to talk to uh, the Drift Dads and Robbie and those dudes. I wonder, you know, how much help they had setting it up. I imagine Robbie had a big part in it. I'm sure. So Lontain what I was keeps told is that I assume. they basically like the um, the track paved it, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Here you go." Really? Yeah. <laughs> Without talking to a Drifter, <laughs> uh, how to drive it? That's what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So they're, they're trying to make the best of, of it. Um, I think that if anybody would have had some insight in it, they, they probably wouldn't have made that second part of the track as long, mm -hmm. um, made it a little bit shorter. It would, it would have made a little bit more sense, but, um, I don't know. I mean, obviously it's their track. They can do whatever they want with it. We're here, yeah. so that's, that's <clears throat> what's cool that we get to play on. What's cool is that they were like straight up open to the possibility of like, you know what guys, we love the event last year. Let's make it even better. What do you guys want? Do you guys need like a new track layout? Do you want us to like lay new pavement? Let's, let's just do it. Which Absolutely. I, I mean, <clears throat> having a track with that type of support, I mean, I wish more tracks were like, I wish yeah. uh, on, uh, um, Ontario or uh, Orlando was like that. I wish <laughs> Jersey was like that. Yeah. You know, course. they're like, oh, yeah, well, let's make this better so yeah. you guys will stick around. Yeah, and the, um, fa the facility itself, it's its a world-class racetrack. I mean, it's, it's not, <laughs> obviously, it's not wall. It's, it's not, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's a nice facility. Obviously, um, they they want to have you guys there. Like, mm -hmm. they... I think, like, the, the using the grandstands is going to be cool. I think it, the first part of the track may be a little bit difficult to see because it's, like, through a fence and, and whatnot, but... Um, it'll be, and then also the, I think the judges are going to have to rely on, um, uh, video for part of it, especially like the yeah, inside what's, clip. What's the, I don't know if you have a bird's eye near you. Um, I'm looking at the, the one on the FD Instagram. Where is the judges tower? Where are the bleachers? Like where is stuff? So the bleachers are like all along the, that big sweeper or like the big bank corner. So yeah. they basically have a full track between them. And then it's like the drift track, and then it's like uh, a fence, and then it's like yeah. more drift track. And then the, from what I heard, the, the judges are going to be up in the um, suites, which are kind of even further away. Uh, but they're yeah. going to be relying on some video, I think, for some of the clips and, and zones yeah. and stuff. So, so 
I was originally looking at this as the, you know, so the big oval picture of the bird's eye. I was picturing that as the big oval that you guys, um, you know, the big right-hander at the end of last year's track. But no, this is all the way tucked in the corner of the grandstands, like where that mm-hmm. big, the big oval is for NASCAR. Right. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense now. So like the cars are going to be coming at the, at, at, towards the grandstands, right? So we're basically coming off the front straight um, backwards into yeah. the infield and then making that S and then continuing on to the, like the turn, I don't know, whatever turn that is, maybe yeah. turn one <laughs> um, uh, in front of the grandstand. So mm. we, we are going to be drifting on the bank and honestly like looking at if we like try to run it backwards um, for one, that bank is so long i don't think we'd have any tires left but also the transition from the bank to the flat is yeah. way more transition than at um, orlando or jersey so I, our car doesn't bottom out but man i i think that quite a few of those dudes cars would be breaking differentials <laughs> yeah it's tough to tell from these photos um you know even the three quarters photo um how yeah, much of, banking or elevation change, if yeah. any? It looks like we're perfectly flat from the photo, but I yeah, guess you guys are actually driving onto the banking a little bit at the very end. Yeah, I think that depending on how they have the last, if it's an inside clip or an outside zone, I think that'll really determine how much of the bank, and then also where that touch and go is, uh, and mm-hmm. where that like arc is going to be around that corner will determine because there's kind of like a pie shape there. Where if they have us like go towards the inside, it should be a pretty easy transition onto the bank. If they do like an outside zone, it's going to be a pretty hard transition onto the bank. So that'll be interesting to see where they put us. I wonder if that rumble strip's going to screw with anyone as well. On that touch like, and go? The last outside zone three, it looks like you're pretty much going over the rumble strip for the oval. Um, this is zone two. Oh, no, that's just like painted. You can't oh, it's even painted? Do it. It's okay, completely flat. It the only like rumble strip that's kind of sketchy is that touch and go. The inner right? one, yeah. Uh, the first touch and go or after the yeah. outer zone one. That touch is and go one. like it's got to be like ten inches up, yeah. and then like an angle, like a slant. So are you, you going that, the right oh, way on the rumble strip, or are you going the wrong way? Like you know, they're kind of shaped like. Uh, like I, you, I, I mean, sometimes they're they're perfectly vertical, but sometimes they're also like. I think a those are just like rounded. I okay. think they're just like a, a rounded, like speed bump kind of deal. Yeah. Um, but I think if you like hit that too much, I mean, it could break suspension or it could really like yeah. throw you for a loop. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be, I'm going to be checking my grams regularly tomorrow to see what's happening in everyone's world because I don't think there's live stream practice. So I'm excited to uh, see how, what everyone thinks. It's going to be interesting for sure. <laughs> what, um, well, actually, we got some super chats, Paco. Yep. <clears throat> let's uh talk to uh paul velichkov long time listener first time listener uh jtp last year in st lou against field you had to open a box that had written on it do not open what were the performance gains when you added that on the car and have you used it this year so that is like the super small pulley for maximum boost and uh mm-hmm. you know field was obviously like super fast and we had to throw everything at it that Pulley was good for probably about 80 horsepower. Oh, nice. Um, and it was one of those things where, like, we knew he was the fastest, and we didn't want to have to put the pulley on. Um, but we put the pulley on. We uh, added, like, a bunch of grip in the rear, and it still was not enough last year for <laughs> him. His car yeah. was a rocket ship. Um, but that was... So you had do not open on it. You said, like, this was your kill setting without tuning I, it Yeah, in. it was like, don't make me use this. Yeah. That's fine. Because uh, it was one of those things where, like, it put the car in potential of, like, blowing up the motor if we mm-hmm. ran it for too much. So, fortunately, the engine held together. Um, but it was one of those things where it was like, this is the ragged edge. Let's only use it if we have to. And um, we used it. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. But uh, <laughs> we actually haven't even used it this year. This year, we, we didn't even run the middle pulley. We were running the big pulley, which is the lowest boost for the first half of the year. Uh, we put the middle pulley on in Jersey because um, we found a whole bunch of performance out of the other parts of the car, uh, mm-hmm. like the, just the suspension gen, uh, setup in general, um, different theories on suspension setup that Tim worked on um, using some dirt track theories. And, and honestly, like 
we've been on the middle pulley uh, for the last two rounds, and I thought last last event we were just as fast as anybody else. Uh, I didn't yeah. think anybody definitely not um, looks low. Yeah, so um, we haven't used that small pulley. I don't think we have any plans of using the small pulley. I think we just found a whole bunch more performance out of some other things in the car. Mm -hmm. If anywhere, I could maybe see Texas or Wendell needing the speed, but um, I guess, do you know if we're running Texas the same as we did last year, or is it going to be? You know, I, I, I haven't heard. I, I definitely wouldn't mind going back to the old layout. I thought that layout was pretty dope. 115 mile an hour run up was uh, my favorite of the old, old layout. I like because coming through there and not having to, like, basically you're accelerating, like, all the way into the, the long left-hand sweeper instead of having to, like, accelerate through the sweeper and then up, uh, you know, and, and mm -hmm. having to upshift through that long stretch instead of already being in on a high gear and being mm -hmm. able to throw, like, big angle um, through that transition to the left-hander. But, you know, it's whatever the judges want us to run. That's what we'll run, I guess. <laughs> you will dance when they say dance. <clears throat> dance, boy. <laughs> and then uh, Bordeaux Fab says, uh, what have you learned building your pro cars over the years? I'm a 21-year-old welder fabricator and starting to do fab work on the bros drift cars. What have you learned, Justin? <laughs> um, I think initially. Uh, everything. Just say everything. Yeah, we got time. Everything. Uh, I think initially I wanted to get like super crazy with fab work and overbuild things. And I've learned over the years to simplify things, um, flex your fab skills in different areas than overbuilding drift cars. At the end of the day, they're a drift car and they don't need to be an off-road truck. So don't you need build gussets, like gussets truck. everywhere. Gussets on don't everyone. Need gussets. <laughs> Definitely don't need gussets everywhere. Put gussets on an off-road truck, not a drift car. They're sweet for street cred, but for like a competitive car, they're just extra weight. You can bend the cage straight to the chassis and weld the cage straight to the chassis, and you're going to get the same performance gains out of that than like, like a, bending two, like three inches away or five inches away from the chassis and throwing a fat gusset in there. The alternative would be just to fabricate your cage and all that stuff closer to the to the existing car structure and then just weld to it, yeah. right? I mean, well, like, yeah, that's gussets. what I did on my new car. Yeah. The cage is laid against the chassis and, and welded directly to the chassis. So it does the same thing as a gusset without a gusset. Yeah, you, I love that. Like You did all the uh, fabrication yourself then? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, all the fab work on, on that and uh, all the fab work on the old car uh, for the most part. I, I've had a couple of my buddies come in. Um, my buddy Matt helped out on the old car um, on some stuff, and he's super bracket man. He can bra make a bracket for anything. Nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, I, I do all my own work. That's awesome. Uh, Paco, anything else before we do Grambers? Um, I was kind of like, uh, I, don't know, I, had a, I had something in my mind. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Big Balls Brian is not here today, and I had to take over in his task, so I've been kind of like, you know, like yeah, the, you've been you've been running the show, managing the wise. managing the controlium and, and the trying chats to be a host, you know? and trying to be a host. So um, I had a couple things. I, I think it'll come up uh, during the questions. But uh, here's a question for you, Paco. Oh, did you have you researched more into making clauses, cool koozies for claws? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, oh um, my god, yep. yes. For those who don't know, I mean, we we know we have our maximum drift cast spaghetti koozies. But, and the cool story behind it that Paco still says isn't true, but I say it's fully true, is that is that I said, Paco, we should design a can of spaghetti koozie with our logo <laughs> instead of, like, the Campbell's can. Um, and then he interpreted that as spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, think, which is beautiful in, in its execution anyways. Yeah. But, yeah, we are talking about making some, yeah. some limited plazies, hopefully in time for... No, can they be in time for grid life? Um, no, it'll take a little longer Damn than it. that. But... Um, I, for, we, I forgot to uh, mention this, but it's been over like m probably two months. We actually have spaghetti leggings and the, yes, spag the spaghetti leggings exist. I'm going to put them. Would you rock some of those for us? <laughs> Please. No. Please. Hey, well, <laughs> I mean, there's there any nowadays there's anything. If you can think it, there's, it's out there. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, uh, we, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll hook you up with some leggings and, you know, you can test them, test drive okay. them. I'll give you some good feedback on it. Perfect. There you go. That's okay, what we want. Perfect. 
All right, so, before we hit those grams, uh, this is actually real easy because I think you have all the same sponsors. Let's hit some sponsors real quick. Uh, Grid Life, of course. We got to thank you guys. We already spent the first 10 minutes talking about you guys, but uh, go to <laughs> Grid Life South. Appreciate the support for the show. Link ECU. Sounds like, Justin, you're going to start working with those boys. As you can see, Paco's rocking the hat. Uh, oh, we've make sure. definitely been working working together. And we're actually, uh, to my knowledge, we're the first. Uh, Link is the first ECU that's been able to uh, control variable valve timing on a Coyote, Ooh, uh, wow, which is really, really awesome. Yeah, they make uh, ECUs for all your applications. I'm excited to finally get one uh, on my car when my car is the car that I use. <laughs> and uh, I got mine. Eight. I got mine going on the Corvette, on the 2JZ Corvette. Ooh, yeah, it's uh, very nice. Yep. What uh, What do you think about the new Corvette, Justin? Uh oh, that's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's uh. I mean, I think they're really stepping into some unknown area, but I, yeah. I can see that they're. You know, I think they, they're trying to make the Camaro more of a Mustang, like, you know, yeah. competition. And, and I think that they're trying to go after, like, the Ford GT to some extent. Although Which is crazy. They, what a fraction of the price. Far, uh, they have a long time yeah. to go. To, yeah, but their zero one one version of this could easily put down those numbers, I bet. I mean, the engine's in the right place for a supercar and all that. I'm curious to see if we're going to see a, a rear-engine or mid-engine uh, drift car now. Um, because of, granted, we saw the Porsche back in the day, but we really haven't seen too many since then because of pendulum and weight distribution and all that. I'm curious to see how this thing will actually run drifting wise. I mean, I definitely think that there's some drivers out there that, that would want that set up. Um, but it's all, you know, drivers, uh, opinion or yeah. preference it doesn't seem optimal for drifting to go mid mid engine even though some some guys have done it i mean uh conrad used to used to drive a porsche with the engine all the way in the back mm -hmm. which makes no that was tyler Ty sorry yeah uh, my bad so i mean uh you know like it's doable it's just like the dynamics of the car are completely different it's like i imagine you have kind of like to relearn how to drive the, well like uh, daigo built that lamborghini but it, yeah. it, but it hasn't been exist. it hasn't been any successful from what it's I understand, a, right? It's a it's a show. Off a car, show. Which yeah. Is cool. But I mean, as far as as far as like uh, keeping it competitive, I think I it's probably not gonna happen. And, we'll see. Uh, someone's gonna do it sooner than later, though, and we're gonna see drifting yeah. videos of that thing. It'll probably happen when that electric car happens. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do do do. Um, a couple couple uh, more let's... couple more super chat questions, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, it seemed like statements more than questions. Statements. Like, Aaron Quilla says, JTP is more handsomer than Corey. That's a yep. statement. We yep. agree. Sorry, Corey. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> Corey's been in, in the Facebook chat a little bit. Corey, you got time to Facebook chat. You got time to podcast, buddy. Where oh, are you? Oh, man. Look, look at this guy. <laughs> it's, uh, I know. From, uh, from, he's actually been working. He's uh, preparing his car because uh, we, we have a grid life, another grid life literally in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, as we all know, uh, even grid life puts quite a quite a dent on your vehicle. Yeah. Well, you're running it hard. And I think yeah. you At least you that. guys know where you stand in his priority list. Yeah, definitely. I mean, oh, you yeah. know, I'm not. I'm, I'm doing nothing with my life, of course. We I are. Don't have, uh, we are. Have, Kevin's, dude. Hey, it takes I, no, a lot Justin's of time. building Kevin's. I'm just. Kevin. I've just got about five yep. video projects that all are uh, screaming for my attention and uh, twenty other. Life things. My house is still trash from this weekend. It's my girlfriend's birthday, and there's this like empty white claws. That's not true. There's not empty white claws. There's a couple full ones in a cooler outside that I might go that was, see what but, they're about after that. That was, by the way, one of my favorite quotes from Corey uh, last weekend at Great Life. He said the class, uh, the uh, white claw cans were the tumbleweeds of Great Life, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And then uh, Bordeaux Fab, the one who asked the Fab question, says, uh, thanks, JTP. Good luck this weekend. Michigan boys will be cheering you on. That's very Yee. nice, man. Bordeaux Fab. All right, some questions here. Um, this is a good one. I want to mention uh, Gregory Buccelli, uh, <laughs> my favorite baby boy, Greg, at Grid Life, Grid Life. Greg, we, are, uh, we finally came up because we've been kind of just rolling around in golf carts together during the day uh, when, when um, we're not announcing. And, and we finally came up with a name for it because um, our job is to make sure that everyone's having a good time. Uh, we're the Vibe Tribe now, as we call <laughs> I thought you were the Rattlesnake Hunters. Yes, we're doing that too. So our goal was to, we're the Rattlesnake uh, Squad. And it wasn't so much that we were going to take care of the rattlesnakes or like, you know, the, the you know, to rescue them and or, you know, get them away from people. 
No, we just want to see some rattlesnakes and poke sticks, poke them with some sticks, maybe. I thought you guys were like pro rally drivers. Yes, so that's the Greg's question. He says, "Who was the faster? Um, who was a who was faster? I don't know if it's. Oh, there you go. Who was faster at the in the? Come on, Greg, work on that, Greg. <clears throat> um, who was faster in the 2019 Rental Car Horizon Festival Rally Stage B? Me or you? Because I definitely say took me. the shortcut. So uh, I would say <laughs> I forgot all about this for some reason. It could have been all the claws I had later on in the night. I didn't forget about it uh, entirely. I just should say I forgot about it when we we're mentioning the head of the show. Um, it wasn't a rental car, first of all, Greg. It was a friend loaned us their. Uh, oh, that wasn't a rental. No, no, that no. was a friend's car. They loaned us. <laughs> Justin, no, no, it's Justin. Look at my face. Look at my face. Wink, <laughs> wink, wink. It wasn't. It was. It was. You can't oh. say wink, Paco. God damn it. God damn it. Um, okay, so as a friend loaned us their CVT 2019 Nissan Sentra. A real beaut. Real good car for the family, for the kids. Um, there was a rally stage at Grid Life Colorado, which was really cool. Um, cool. And Greg has some driving panache and skill that I didn't know. I don't think he lifted the whole course. He was counter-steering, uh, you know, manging, you name it. He was also cutting corners of the course and going through three foot tall cacti <laughs> and bushes all while listening uh we we were listening to uh, adele the whole time and it was beautiful because you just hear like and i said fire to the rain and like they was doing this and, and it starts raining and it was just a, a whole experience that was beautiful and That's then awesome. justin justin got behind the wheel and i think greg might be right i think i think greg was faster I don't know. I mean, I, my eyes were closed the entire time yeah. driving. So, <laughs> uh, brother, you were like was... you were swatting flies in that steering wheel for sure. Oh, jeez, that was yeah. so much fun. Greg also decided to be fun to grab one of the Nexon girls and have her set shotgun while we we're doing this, and uh, she was just yelling uh, obscenities, and she was pumped and not pumped, I think, at the same time. <laughs> but it was it was it was a very good time. We're sorry, um, uh, Bill about your, your car, um, we'll, you know, we'll get the damage repaired soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the front end took a beating. Oh, that's what the front is for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the front end is yeah. just uh, is just the prickly pear cactus catcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, just change out the fascia, there's quick releases. No I mean, it's do. a 2019 rally car, no, so I'm do. sure yeah. the, the team got it all dialed back in. It was custom built. Yeah. Yeah. But well, before we before we continue with the uh, Instagram question, Sam, uh, we didn't finish mm -hmm. uh, thanking uh, thanking our pay, our sponsors. Oh yeah, so, I started to talk about AM. Yeah, we also have AM intakes. Thank you guys for supporting the show, and also our patrons. And our patrons are mainly the reason that the Patreon is El Patron. The, uh, you guys are the reason why we are capable of doing this show. And just a couple of weeks ago, we did a little uh, giveaway. Uh, with some so with our friends from uh, Dream Tank, they gave us some soap that you're gonna send to the guys. I haven't sent them yet because Paco. because I was waiting for one more item that I wanted to put on the on the swag packs that we we're sending to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which these are our patrons. Uh, they're the mm. that's how you get and it's these uh, little um, pins. Oh, Look at that little tofu thingy. drift fan pin. Yeah, it's a little it's a little tiny pins that I, I, I uh, our friends from SM Pin Shop made for me. It, this is a and where do you where do you pin that thing on your pen? Yeah, you can this? you can pin it on your shirt. You can pin it on your I don't know on your pants. You can pin it on. What you want to do is you want to clean up your downstairs yes. region with that soap, and then you do there want to take go. that pin and pin yeah. it, sterilize it, and pin it to you know somewhere where you can impress a special friend of yours. Because yeah. just picture this: like let's say that you're having a night out. And you meet you meet a nice boy or girl, whatever uh, you like, and and you go back. Things get things are going well, and then the pants come off. And what do you see? You see a full mast ding dong, and a pin <laughs> is is going right through the head of it, and it's a tofu drift van. Oh, and and the, I mean, that would be impressive. So it's a I tofu think. drift van, Prince. Uh, no, what's Albert. it called? Prince, Prince Albert. Prince Albert, a Prince Albert tofu drift van. That's right. And if you're a lady, I'm sure you can figure out something um, on your end. But, Here's your imagination um, where yeah, you want to put fans. the little, this little but guy. I don't, think any, I don't think any ladies listen to this show anymore if they <laughs> did it at some point. If there was one uh, lady listening, I think she just like went she away. She stopped. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, she's 
Um, here's, we'll go back to the questions here. Conspire, I don't know if you know who that is, Justin. Do you know who Conspire is on Instagram? I think so. It's one of the judges. Also known yeah. as Brian Your, Egg, fa your favorite judge. Um, <laughs> he says, out of all the flavors, what's your favorite? Salty. <laughs> I was going to say that, <laughs> damn it. Salty Justin, gotcha. Um, Paco, I have a question from Killeen Green. Actually, oh. caramel. Oh. caramel. I'm a caramel boy, too. There you go. That. Uh, question from uh, Killeen Dreams. She's asking, how fast can you crush a White Claw? Mm. Mm. Like, have you had a White Claw? Me? Yeah. What's a White Claw? Oh, yeah, come see? on. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> it's all a blur. I don't know. They're um, pretty small, so I, I feel like I could crush it. Like, yeah. drink it or crush it? Crush it while drinking it. What you want to do is tip your head back and kind of pop eye that thing into your mouth. You crush just, the can. Yeah. Shoot it, yeah. Hold on. I, God, I hope no one does a screen capture of what we're just doing. God damn it. <laughs> oh, no. Sam, it's not Fuck like nobody no. has ever seen you playing the bass flute. <laughs> Oh, go delete the episode. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> cancel, cancel. <laughs> All right, let's just move on. Um, official Mike Donnelly with a really hot question here. Not sure if this has been discussed on the podcast before, but was your FC the hero car in the movie 200 Miles an Hour? Great movie. If so, how do you make it transform from an FC to an S14? Great question. Yeah, that was like the pride and joy of my FC. Um, so, yeah, that was the great video or movie thing whatever you want to call it was uh <laughs> taking place and um yeah my car was like the hero car or whatever and my car got stolen during the filming of that show and um nobody ever found it wait and what they, yeah so, my, my original RC. yeah it was never found oh how so do you feel about seeing that green fc at grid life this last weekend or two weekends dude ago? I, actually that thing was pretty sick i uh yeah. it drifting with it and like seeing all the like photos of it and, and everything on like grid life's ig and whatnot it definitely brought back some like solid memories of it. man like i missed that thing that was one of our friends from scoundrels actually the soap did, people yeah and actually i got a chance to drift with them that's cool sick did you Hell what yeah. did you ever find out anything about that like i feel like there's only so many places a car like so that can go and not be there was it was probably like two or three years later i get a phone call and um from from um, an acquaintance, and uh, he was like, "Hey, so I traded some coilovers for this hood, and I had this hood in my um, bedroom, and I opened up the closet, and the hood fell, and like paint cracked off of it. It was like primer black, and underneath the paint there was like a whole bunch of different co colors because I had that car was like green, and then champagne, and then blue, and then green, and green, and like." a whole bunch of different colors so he said that the yeah. paint chipped off and it was my hood and this was like yeah. probably three at least three years after that it had happened yeah and um i had gotten i you know i got the dude's address that he went to his house to like trade these coilovers for and i was like i was starting to plan out like <laughs> i'm gonna go get this dude and it was in east l.a and honestly, I, I started, I talked to my wife about it and she's like, forget about it. Like it's yeah. in the past. Like you're not going to get anything out of it. Like, There's like, little to gain and much to lose. Right. So I basically was like, you know what? He, he's like, I'll, I'll give you the hood if you want. And I was like, no, dude, like I don't, I'm over it. I've moved on. Like, I don't really want to see any part of that car. I have the rear bumper off of it uh, from Irwindale when I went one more time with Tanner. And that's like one of the only pieces of that car that I have left. And um, honestly, like uh, apparently those dudes wanted it more than what I wanted it or thought they deserved <laughs> it more than me. Yeah. Um, but honestly, that that was like a car that I would have never sold or never gotten oh, rid of. Nice. I mean, it had so much yeah. history. I got my D1 license. I got my Formula D license. I won top drift in that thing. And it just sucks that thieves do what they do, man. Like, yeah, a thief is just the shitty list. people. But if you guys ever bought any uh, flat black uh, body panels for an FC, uh, maybe give a little hammer hit and see what's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> and don't don't tell me. Yeah, don't, don't tell Justin. About it. But we'll we'll come up with uh, you tell us and we'll we'll raid that area like it was fifty one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
Uh, Euro JZX a really strong question here. Would you rather never use the internet again or have Pat Good in one meter away from you at all times? <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? All right. We're not. Would you rather never use the internet again? So on one hand, you can never be on the internet. I imagine that means phone to some extent. Um, or have Pat Gooden away one meter, three feet Oof. away from you at all times. Uh, all times. And this is all times. He's not just talking about like during the day. Like this is showering, pooping, making, our, making loves. Would not have, not have Pat there, or you have, would have to have Pat, or you lose the internet. I'd rather lose the internet. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. I'll just, I'll just go rock crawling. But then I would have no career, and I would, my family would live on the street. I, th I bet you'd live healthier and happier if you didn't have the internet again. But also, I, maybe, I think we maybe, all would, but I think would, none of us would have jobs. Yeah, I mean, but you could have a helper help you with the internet. You know, your wife and your kid can help you with the internet, and you just get to disconnect all day, which would be pretty sick. Um, love, yeah, I mean, Pat, honestly, I love just. Dis but also, but maybe, it's Pat, but but maybe the Pat Gooden scenario. You don't have the internet either. He didn't mention that. So maybe in the Pat Gooden scenario, you don't have the internet. And Pat Gooden is your internet. And that would be fun if Pat gets what, said, if, what if Pat just whispers in my ear constantly? What does yeah. this like? <laughs> That sounds cool. I bet Pat would be a good helper to have one meter away. He would give you claws. He'd give you His passion. Good advice. We could watch possums together. It'd be a cool time. Pat Sorry, Jr. Pat, that Justin doesn't think so. <laughs> I have a very, very serious question from mm -hmm. Maximum Drift Cat. Mm -hmm. Would you rather be a four-year-old virgin or a four-year-old grandparent? Hmm. A forty-year-old virgin or a forty-year-old grandparent? Grandparent. Mm -hmm. Are you? I dad? think like a forty-year-old grandparent would be kind of cool. Yeah, although, cool. oh, you can yeah. take out the grandkids and still be strong yeah. and have energy. <laughs> um, mouth hug sixty-nine. Great name. If Corey's butt cheeks were ever severely <laughs> sunburned, what would be the chance of you clapping lotion on those cheeks to help a bro out? Was that a question for you, Sam? No. <laughs> I guess you. It's very clearly for you. Uh, um, uh, next one, I guess. <laughs> well, well, what would be the chance, though? You Zero. Part of the Zero chance for helping a bro out? Sorry, Corey. The best part you... is that Mouth Hug 69 is assuming that Corey can't reach his butt cheeks. <laughs> Corey's got a girl, man. She can. That's her job. Yeah. He uses one she of those that. one of those sticks for wiping your butt. You know, like. Mm -hmm. eh. <laughs> How sad would that be if you couldn't reach your butt? Oh my god, just at that point, just just kill me. You'd have yeah. You like, man. <laughs> I feel bad for anybody that's in that situation. Yeah, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but yeah, that suck. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Um, Senor Chava90 says, in a pillow fight between Denofa versus Forsberg, who do you have your money on? Oof. Man, a pillow fight. I don't know, man. I feel like... I mean... Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I feel like Chelsea's got the dad bod going on. Yeah. He's got <laughs> more padding uh, for the... For the <laughs> so I feel like he could take a pretty good hit. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like... Forsberg has the reach. He's got long arms. He does have long arms. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, that would be that's a pretty good one. You should yeah. actually try to get them on. Maybe that would be fight. the way to solve this. That's probably yeah. how. Not, not that <laughs> there's like from there's like on a... out from this point forward, mm. any like altercations are it's solved with a pillow fight. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Make it happen. Make it happen. Only on the maximum drift cast. That's yes. right. That's a good idea. It's an exclusive pay-per-view on Maximum Driftcast, the there official pillow fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one right here from um, Bad Habits Drifting. He's asking, Justin Pollock, if you had to choose one of these Pro 2 rookie uh, this season to personally coach slash groom to a top level Pro 1 competitor, who would you choose? Now, he's giving options, but feel free okay. to say whoever you think it's better. He's asked uh, Rome Charpentier, Andrew Schulte, Adam LZ, or AJ Muzz. Um, I feel like Rome is like 
Actually, I, I feel like I've helped Rome a little bit. Uh, I judged him at like the first round of Drift League. Um, it seems like he's very like attentive and and you know listens to advice and, and that sort of thing. I think um, AJ definitely uh, would is kind of has surrounded himself around, uh, with like really good people too. Um, uh, I mean, Adam, I think he's just having fun. So I don't think he would really take constructive criticism or anything that that well necessarily. And uh, um, who is the other person? Andrew Schulte, like one of our local uh, guys. He's got the car with a with a hentai. Japanese anime and the hentai girls on oh, the, yeah, on the yeah. doors. Um, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, like I I try to. I wouldn't mind helping any of those guys out. Really. I mean, I think I if the more veterans of the sport don't try to or wouldn't make themselves available if any of those dudes wanted like some some uh you know constructive criticism or or advice or, or whatever if you don't make yourself available for that then what are you really trying to do for the sport i mean i would yeah. try to make myself available for any, like anybody um really in the pro two or even pro am i mean i want to help promote the sport i want to see drivers get better i want to see guys come in and you know, I'm not going to be doing this the rest of my life, so I want the sport to continue to grow. That's nice. Awesome. Yeah, I uh, I totally forgot this weekend is also Pro Two. It's been so long without Pro Two. <laughs> that's that, right. uh, but it's going to be a full. Cool. It's going to be a full house. Yeah, it's going to be cool to see the Pro Two boys back at it again. Um, that does it for me for the questions. Anything else for our uh, good friend JTP here before we let him get a good night's rest? And yeah, he needs to go. He needs to go tomorrow. drive tomorrow. So. Uh, Justin, hey, anything... no easy on the leaning kugels too. I know you had one. You yeah, I mean that one is gonna put me <laughs> out. Yeah, <laughs> gonna blame it tomorrow. Like, ah, oh, these... I had to drink. I was like obligated to drink a beer with you guys. It is. It makes it makes the you know a little a little sweet makes the pill go down easier. That I, but, I butchered that state that saying, but Man, you know, I typically it's... don't drink. Uh, on drift weekends, except for after set on Saturday. Woo, we're bad influences. What up? So bad. One beer is going to really do it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, you got anything to say to the universe, to us, to, uh, you want to say, what kind of, you want to make some peace with Kevin in heaven? <laughs> Kevin, heaven, before you go? Or Kev. We'll see you next time, buddy. Thank oh. you. See you next Tuesday, Kevin. Little baby kisses, too. Little baby kisses for Kevin. Um, you know, any you want to thank um, your sponsors? Do you want to thank your fans? I'm just giving some suggestions. You don't have to if you don't like your sponsors, like or yeah, you. Oh no, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it without the people that let me do it. Rui, so, Ru Ru thanks, Rouse. Thanks, Ru uh, Falcon and Lucas, and I mean all the guys that like, I have. So many good sponsors that have supported me, and and honestly, like I wouldn't be able to do what I do without their support. Um, I try to be more organic with my mentions of that stuff instead of being like, go by, yeah. you know, I try to, I try to like say, Hey, this is what I use for like, uh, a solution, um, mm -hmm. to the things that I go after. So, but no, I definitely have had great partners that continue to support me and believe in me. And I, I'm very appreciative of that. And, you know, thanks for Falcon for giving me the big break back in 2010 and believe in me give me an uh, opportunity to chase this crazy dream it's kind of like how white claws actually been sponsoring us this whole time yeah. we just keep on doing this viral like, promotion of this it. is what i need <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not over the top with it you know that's right awesome justin cool, well thank cool. you so much for spending your time with us and uh very good luck to you and the rest of uh, your team and to all the drivers at this very new track um we'll see you guys uh for our halftime show, half uh, show before top 16 that will hopefully be executed perfectly this time without any <laughs> uh, issues. We're fingers crossed and we're going to do our best to make sure it's quality content and that'll do it. And look out for, I think we're going to have Vaughn next week. We're going to do a very special grid life. We are not going to do a drift draft for grid life South this time because um, they've already kind of picked their drivers, but we're going to talk to uh, a couple of the drivers picked from all genres of, uh, of competition levels and we're going to be hanging out with Nicholas Swansong and maybe some more grid life peeps and that'll be a special show next week as well and uh, that's it that's all you have to look forward to in your life nothing else matters <laughs> yep. with, with that right, said, thank you thank you Justin and with that said thank you so much for tuning in it's yep, time we'll for us 
to go back to the deepest pits of the internet. So uh, good night. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.